So in this video we're going to explore the relationship between the shear force generated within a beam and the applied loading applied to it. So we're going to consider a portion of a beam with some distribution of loading on it. Not necessarily a UDL, but we are having a continuous loading on there. And we're going to zoom in in particular on a very small portion of the beam. So very small, we're going to take it as a differential width of dx. We're going to zoom in on that little differential portion that is dx wide. And we're going to examine the equilibrium of this portion of the beam. You see, we've admitted any moments that would be on this portion. And we're just considering any forces in the y direction. And we're going to equate equilibrium so some of the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero for equilibrium so on the left hand side we have a shear force applied there of v and the loading upon it will have a magnitude of little w multiplied by the length over which that loading is applied. And we're taking the average W over that DX. And that we're pointing downwards. So we'll give that a negative value. And on the right hand side for our positive shear force convention. We have a shear force V. Plus a tiny portion DV. And how the shear force has varied over this little section. And for this to be in equilibrium, this must be equal to zero. And I'll have the V plus DV, I'll keep in brackets. And I'm going to re rearrange this formula for W. And we get that W equals minus DV by DX. And this is a, a relatively important result. So I think that's worth putting in a box to, to note how important that is. And we're going to move a little bit further with this. First of all, before I move on, this minus sign, important to note, this minus sign occurs because the loading points downwards. If we chose different sign conventions, this might come out as positive, but for the sign convention we're choosing, we get a negative because the load W pointing downwards. Okay. Now we move on further, and we're going to rearrange this equation slightly. I'm going to take this dx up here, and so we would get that we have w dx equals minus dv. And I'm going to choose to take this minus to the left-hand side, multiplying both sides by minus 1. So dv, and I'm going to integrate both sides. So if I integrate this side, integrate this side, set the limits of the integration. So this is an integration over dx. So the limits would be x naught. So if I call the coordinate here at this left hand side, x naught over the distance d that I'm integrating over, which would be x. And on the right hand side, we have V, V naught. So I'm taking V naught to be the existing shear force at some point that I'm considering. And to V at the shear force at the point where I stop my integration. And we're going to evaluate these integrals. And we get that the shear force at some point away from V0 is equal to V0 minus the integral between X0 and X of W dx. And again, let's put a box around this equation. What this means is that the shear force at some point X is the known shear force that, that you may know for some reason v naught at a point x naught minus and this is the, the second term here 
minus the integral of w dx, which is integrating w over dx is the magnitude of the loading on the beam between two points x and x naught. And I think it's useful to illustrate what we mean by way of an example. And we go back to an example that we've examined previously. Well, we had a beam of some sort. And maybe this beam is subject to a UDL. And we knew that on this left hand side the reaction force on this left hand side was WL upon 2 and we're going to think of this as our V naught and if we want to find our shear force at some point X so this is X naught and this is X then our shear force V equals v naught minus the integral of w dx so where w is the intense in this case a constant intensity for a uniformly distributed load so and i'm substituting the values i know now so the v at, The value V of the shear force at this point where we've made a cut is equal to V naught, which was WL upon 2, minus the total sum of the loading. And the total sum of the loading, if this distance between X naught and X is X, is W times X. And that is the result we got earlier when we looked at this problem so what this can be useful when you have some situation and let's draw some beam and maybe i know the shear force here v naught i don't care what's going on on the left hand side but i do wish to know the value v and I can calculate that very simply. If I know the, fo the, the force here, the shear force V naught, I can very easily calculate V if I know what has gone on between. So if there is no loading, this shear force V is equal to V naught. Maybe if there was a point loading, then the shear force V then would become, so if this point load is F, would be V naught minus the total force in between the points, which would be minus F. And so very quickly calculate shear forces at a given point along the beam. And this will become really useful for tutorial problems. But my, when you first encounter them, look incredibly complicated. And so we have a shear uh, tutorial problem in the notes. Maybe we even have, and um, we could have a point load here, a bit of UDL, a point load here. And what this enables us to do is go along the beam in portions, like we've done previously, so with the walk along method. We walk along the beam in portions, and if we know, say for example, We've already done all of the calculations to work out the shear force at this point. I can easily, from this starting value here, calculate what the new value, V, must be at a new point along the beam. So I don't really, I don't have to start my calculations again. So, let me just illustrate what we could have done. You could have drawn a free body diagram all the way to V that would include the reaction force, this point load, and the UDL, and finally up on the left, down on the right, the shear force of V. However, you can also have drawn a free body diagram 
where you already know what the shear force V0 is. I'm assuming it to be positive pointing upwards, but it may be negative. I can then worry about the uniformly distributed load that I have on the point. And I'll put up on the left, down on the right, a V on the right hand side of this free body diagram. And I can deal with this much simpler system because I've already calculated the shear at this point and I can ignore this point load and this reaction force because I've already written the equations down getting to this point.